Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. A week or two back, I published a film which I rather grandly called a masterclass on setting up a jointer planar thicknesser over there. And I've had a few people ask me about the jig I used for polishing the bevels on the knives before they get installed. Making a honing jig like this is not technically difficult, but there's something that we must take into account right at the very beginning. And that is, what angle are we going to hone at? And the answer to that question will depend on your knives. Now, I'm pretty sure that my machine originally came with knives that were ground at 40 degrees. But these have just come back from the saw doctor and I've measured them and these are ground at 42 degrees. So if I hone these at 40 degrees, all I'll get is a very nicely polished heel of the bevel. It would be no use to me whatsoever. So you've got to hone at at least the grind angle. And if it's a degree or two more than that, it doesn't matter. It'll just produce a secondary bevel right on the edge, like you do when you're sharpening a plain iron. And remember, the cutting angle of the machine is determined by the cutter head itself. This grind angle is only relief. It's only clearance, so it doesn't really matter exactly how much it is. A degree or two other way, one way or the other, is not going to make any difference whatsoever. So, I, these are 42. I'm going to make this jig to hone them at 45 degrees. For two reasons. One, it'll give me a micro bevel. And two, it makes the machining very easy, because 45 degrees is a standard angle. And I can keep my, the rest of my block nice and square whilst I do that. So I'm going to use this piece of, it's actually cherry, although you could be forgiven for not realising it. It's almost entirely sapwood. So it's not a lot of use for furniture, except perhaps as a secondary timber. Uh, but ideal for this, nice and hard, tight. It will take a screw thread, which, which we need just to hold the um, knives in place. So a bit of scruffy old cherry. Uh, so I need to cut it to length and then machine these two slots on the table saw. So this is the setup for my table saw. I've got the blade canted at 45 degrees and it's sticking up just eight millimeters, five sixteenths of an inch. And I've calculated that actually from my existing one, which I realize you won't necessarily have, but that's what I've done. And I'm gonna make two cuts, the first one, and then turn it round and do the second one. Now this is quite short. So I'm using a feather board to keep it pressed against the fence, particularly so at the end of the cut, because there's nothing else to push here at the back. So I'm going to use two push sticks for this job. One to push it forward, but then at the end of the cut, because I don't want to be reaching over the blade, I'm going to uh, keep it pushed in at this end until it's well clear of that blade. And as you can see, I've removed my... Uh, my super guard, my overhead guard, because it, it really gets in the way when you're using short pieces and a feather board as well. Everything happens inside the guard, which isn't terribly helpful. So I'm going to use my standalone guard, which has got magnets on the bottom, and that allows me to see what I'm doing, use my push sticks, but it stops me doing anything stupid. So let's, um, let's give it a whirl. I really only get one shot at this, otherwise the workpiece is ruined. But I think I'm set up correctly.
Whoopee! And there I've got my two nice 45 degree grooves for my knives. They're not quite deep enough. They're not quite deep enough. So I'm going to raise the blade and I can do that actually. I can raise the blade another couple of millimetres. Ooh, why did I get that so wrong? Still, they're in the right place, that's the main thing. I'll sort it out while you're not looking. <laughs> right, well I've rearranged my fence for, for cutting a, a through bevel rip. And uh, that means having the fence on the left so that the blade is tilting away from the fence. And that way, there's no triangle for anything to get trapped in here. Uh, there is a triangle here, but there's only two sides of it. So my waist will be underneath the blade and that can just fall away onto the table. And nothing can get trapped and thrown back at me. Um, I worked this out as I was, trying to, as I was actually setting it up. And the, uh, the way I'm going to orient this, I'm going to have my workpiece on its edge like that. Uh, if I have it down that way, um, that way, the problem is for the second cut, at the end of the second cut, there's almost no flat support left as it's being pushed um, over, the, over the rest of the blade, to be clear, because this bit here is very, very narrow. Uh, but by having it upright like, like uh, that, get my angles the right way round, then I've got, a quite a, I've got a good bearing surface against the fence, and I've even got a half-decent bit uh, on the table itself. So I can push it right through without fear of it, of it tipping. So we don't need that, get rid of that. Uh, because I've got, I'm, I'm working this side of the fence, uh, I don't really want to mount my, fence, my guard here because it just gets in the way. So I'll put my guard this side, like that. Uh, and that way I can see what I'm doing. I've got access at the side for my, for my waist piece and um, it, it, it still stops me from doing anything stupid. Right, let's have a go then. Now you can see that my waist piece just fell away from the blade. It, nothing got thrown back at me, so I'm quite pleased about that. And then I've just got to turn it over and do the other one. I was saying, that's why we don't stand here. It's been a long time since that's happened. I'm glad I caught it on camera though. That looks right though, that looks really good. And um, I'm not hurt. Ooh. I've been trying to work out what happened there, what went wrong, because that shouldn't have happened, should it? And I think what I must have done, instead of pushing the waist only forward out of the way what I think I probably did was accidentally push the waist into the blade at the end and uh, I didn't intend to do that but something's pushed it back so if that made contact with those rising teeth it would get thrown back um, I'm glad I wasn't standing here I do try to stand out of the way when I'm doing things like this but I think that's what went wrong so there's a lesson for all of us, I think. I mean, I think I'm fairly safety conscious, actually. 
And uh, if that can happen to me, it can happen to you. Ooh. I've got a couple of options open to me for drilling the holes here and here for the little knobs that hold the knives in place. And one option would be to use my horizontal borer. And that would work quite well, I think, because it would be supported flat on this face and I could just push it in. But I do recognise that not everybody has a horizontal borer. Although, if you watch my video, you'll see it's not actually that difficult to make one. But many of us have got a drill press. So that's what I'm going to use. The problem is, to drill down like this, there's not a great deal of support. It's just on that sharp edge. And there's nothing to keep it from sort of rocking this way or, or that. So, I've cut myself a little piece of scrap at 45 degrees. And I'm going to tape it to the back there so that it's supported whilst I do the drilling. And then I'll just have to move it to the... If I'd cut this specially, I'd have made it full length. So I could have done one side and then the other. But um, I found this in the scrap box and it was perfect. So, so uh, that's what I'm going to use. So I'll just stick this in place and then you can come round and uh, watch it happening over here. Now that all that remains is to tap our holes, M6. Let's just get started. There we go. If you haven't got a tap, you can sharpen a bolt up. Just grind a couple of flats on it. It works quite well, but taps are not expensive. There we go. And just wait to feel the bottom because I don't want to strip the thread. A bit surprised we're not there yet. Ah, there. I can feel it's right. Don't get any more, Steve. Out she comes. And with any luck, in goes... In goes my knob. Excellent. Whatever you decide to hone your knives on has to be flat. Now, this is a piece of glass that's about um, 10 millimetres thick, and I've got my scary sharp papers on one side, and I've got some P120 emery cloth on the other. And this is what I used in the film. But I've recently acquired a piece of granite. There was a chap chucking this away at the tip, and I blagged it off him. And um, it weighs an absolute ton. It's really very heavy. But these things are ground on a big industrial polisher. So this is flat. F-L-A-T for lat. Which is what we want, of course. And I've got some P-180, sorry, P-80 and P-120 on here. And I really, I've got to find some way of, of identifying them because it's very difficult. You can tell by the sound, actually. So I'm pretty sure... Right, this is the P80, this is the coarse one. So we'll just give it a few strokes on that and then we can polish it up. And I can, I can see, even without my glasses actually, I can see the glint. I'm now getting a beautiful bevel, right, a secondary bevel, right on the very edge of that knife, which of course is exactly where we need it. Of course, it's not sufficient to have just a bevel that's highly polished. On this model, I've got a bevel here, which is cut very cleanly, but because the back is all rough and scratched and scarred, it means that the edge is actually very raggedy. In contrast, this end has got a bevel that is nicely cut and the back is smooth as well. And the result is a much sharper edge. Now, the idea for this jig came to me whilst I was actually doing the filming. Try and keep the pressure evenly on the edge. I'll have to think of a gadget to do this more successfully. Maybe some rare earth magnets mounted in a block. So I took a piece of wood, which was the same thickness as the width of my knife. 
drilled a row of holes. And then rounded off the corners nicely. And the edges. You do have to be careful routing this front corner because you're routing entirely against the grain there. So that has to be done quite carefully. And these finger pulls are done with a technique called dropping on, which is a little bit advanced, you might say. I've got a whole film devoted to dropping on. You do have to be careful. But if you've got your stops set up well, lots of support, then it does produce excellent results. So I've got something which is nice to hold. And then just screwed in all my magnets. So I've got my knife that has got a nicely polished bevel, but I can actually feel that there is a burr on there. I wonder if the microphone will pick it up. I hope it does. That's from the bevel honing process, and we don't want burrs on a nice um, sharp edge, do we? So that just gets held in place like that. And I'm going to give it a few strokes on the P80. And that's got a bit of a lot of those machining marks. A bit more at this end. And then I'm going to do it on the 120, and I'm going to keep the pressure onto the edge that's got the, uh, the side that's got the edge on it. So I'm not going to cant it over, but just keep the pressure on that side. And that is absolutely lovely. I've got no striations that I can see on the edge where the, where the cutting edge is, on, to the side of where the cutting edge is. That's lovely. So they are really ready to go into the machine next time I need to change my knives. So these knives are not as good as new. These knives are better than new. If you found this helpful, please remember to like, subscribe and share. It's the only way that these films get seen. But thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio!